I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Denko Mancheski, the CEO of Reef Finance. Denko, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Hi Ashton, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm really excited for our discussion. If we could just jump right into it, let's start with what exactly is the focus of Reef Finance and what are the problems that your team is solving for? Sure. Uh, so uh, basically, we are solving uh, three main issues. The first one is the fragmentation of this landscape. As we've seen, as the DeFi landscape grows, we have you know multiple apps, uh, multiple ecosystems. So it's very hard to manage you know your LP tokens across multiple wallets. So this is the first one. The second one is you have so many choices. So where do you invest? Like it's uh, it's um, uh, different APYs. They change on daily basis, on hourly basis. And you as, uh, as a new investor coming into the landscape, you're confused. You don't know the names of the project. You don't know what you have to learn, where to start from. And the third one is all the, you know, all the fees and how, how expensive it is to participate in, uh, in certain activities. So these are, these are the problems that, uh, that we are tackling. So uh, what happens is uh, we are building on top of the DeFi ecosystem. So we're composing uh, and integrating on the, uh, on the existing uh, financial primitives out there. Mm -hmm. That's great. And yeah, there's definitely some confusion right now, especially when you have multiple LP tokens and you're providing liquidity and it's really sort of scattered around. Um, so to put that in a easy to use platform make, makes a lot of sense. And now there are a lot of DeFi platforms that are popping up because there are a lot of problems that need to be solved, yeah. which is great that you're solving these problems. But would you say there's something unique or different mm -hmm. uh, about Reef that allows you to have a competitive advantage over other DeFi platforms? Sure. So if we if we take aside, you know, the financial primitives, because these, these are what we, we stand on top. So if there are, if, if those projects don't exist, such as like Balancer and Uniswap, we will not be able to do what we want to do. So besides besides the fact that we are like one layer above, uh, we are we have something uh, very unique which makes Reef non forkable. So you cannot just spin off another version and, and call it like another name, because we have this analytics engine which uh, we've been working for over two years now. And uh, last year we we did like a B2B model, so we were. Uh, providing metrics to certain crypto funds who were who were basing their decisions on those metrics. So what happens is uh, we collect a lot of data in the background. It's like, uh, you know, AI powered uh, and there's a lot of like uh, statistics going on. So we collect metrics from three different sources, social media, uh, blockchain traffic, exchange mm -hmm. data, and we extract metrics for each of the DeFi instruments, and I call them DeFi instruments because something like is, a, for example, a direct token exposure, something mm -hmm. is a lending protocol, something is a, is a pool that you stake into and so on. So we extract a lot of metrics and out of these metrics, we derive the risk levels. And then you as a user, you come to the platform, you can choose the types of the baskets and the baskets are just a composition of different uh, DeFi instruments. And then you choose your risk level and our analytics engine in real time is proposing for your, you know, personal fit, what would be the best, uh, you know, the, the best composition to get into. And then with just one click, you're uh, invested and then you're able to like uh, track the performance of, of mm. the whole basket. And uh, the cool thing about it is that when you invest, you mm. don't really like the output of the investments, for example, an, an LP token, you don't have to manage it yourself because the basket mm. is holding your whole position. So it's really just one click invest, one click divest. So that, that's that's uh, something that no no other project uh, uh, has at the, at the very moment. Definitely. And in this world of, of data, analytics really can give you a competitive advantage. So uh, it's great to hear that you have been working on that for so long. Now, and that yeah. sort of leads me to ask, did you start two years ago or when did you really start the core of the platform and and how long have you been working on it leading up to this launch yeah so uh you know uh, half of our team is mm, like tra traders slash uh investors and we've started by building this analytics engine which uh, we wanted to turn it into like a uh, its own analytics company where people can or, or big funds can like buy like uh, you know they can pay on monthly basis and then we can provide them certain metrics and uh, this worked really well but we thought that why not allow the average user to be able to have the same insights and have the same you know uh, uh, aug aug augmenting of the 
call uh, you know investment landscape the mm -hmm. same just like those investors it seems like this is a more scalable model plus we are a bit to see and you know we are uh, getting we are in an early landscape so we can be like a like a leader and take take like a big market share from the start and that's how that's how brief happened so basically our initial goal was not to build like a b2c product it was um, it was uh, the goal to build this analytics engine and work with uh, funds and family offices but we figured when when the defi spike happened in november which we saw through through our analytics engine we, we decided let's let's fully focus on defi and build this on-chain infrastructure and make it make it easy for everyone to participate so that that's how that's how mm -hmm. it, it happens it's organically yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny how the environment moves and then you pivot and all of a sudden you find a great uh, s position in, in the industry and, and it starts to grow. And now you mentioned you're focused on B2C, but it seems like these tools also would provide a lot of value for institutional investors uh, and, and funds. Do, do you see everybody in the industry potentially using Reef uh, for these tools? Correct. Yes, actually, we've been we've been talking to so some of our investors. They're like, "Oh, look, this is this would be awesome for ourselves because we want DeFi exposures as a fund as well." Mm -hmm. So uh, what we what we decided to do is uh, uh, mid next uh, quarter, we actually want to expand in Singapore, and as mm -hmm. you know now, it being you know the financial center and mm -hmm. most of our investors funds being based there, we would like to start onboarding institutional investors and family offices as well. That's great. And I wanted to ask, can you talk a little bit about the partners and investors that you have so far in Reef? Sure. So uh, we have, uh, you know, some of the most, uh, you know, popular investors in this landscape, you know, uh, probably like uh, the viewers know uh, NGC, QCP, uh, Woodstock, uh, uh, Bitcoin.com, LD Capital, one, one of the you know, biggest, uh, biggest Chinese funds. Then you have Kinetic. Uh, and you have Genesis Block, which uh, which owns one of the biggest OTC desks in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a diverse, a diverse group of uh, of funds as well as uh, as well as influencers. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I really what, one interesting thing about Reef is the the technology underlying this platform. And most of the DeFi space is built on the Ethereum network. At least that's where a lot of the traffic is right now. But you've built it also uh, with the cross chain you know, opti mm -hmm. optimization to Polkadot's network. Can you can you talk about Correct. why you chose that combination of that tech stack? Sure, sure. So uh, our initial version of the product, which we want to launch very early, very early Q1, might might even happen by the end of this year, is uh, is a Solidity implementation, which means uh, we'll have we we will we'll deploy it on Ethereum as well. So what happens is uh, Polkadot is not like a separate ecosystem. Polkadot and the whole interoperability layer was built to unite or defragment those ecosystems. So our goal and why we chose Polkadot is uh, we uh, we will be able to be present in multiple ecosystems at the same time mm -hmm. and offer our users a different variety of assets into a single basket. So they can, for example, with one click get, get into, for example, Ethereum, Kava and, uh, and Akala which is uh, three different ecosystems with we, we, we ju just one click. And uh, uh, our goal is to eventually abstract away all, all the different ecosystems and all the bridging mechanisms away so the users don't and shouldn't even care that this asset is somewhere else. Like uh, the UX mm -hmm. shouldn't change at all for him. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the user experience will be key to the growth. And as it continues to grow and, and DeFi potentially grows into many more blockchains, do you foresee having that compatibility to expand if if there's something on the Cosmos network or other blockchains that are now growing in the DeFi space as well? Yeah, for sure. Actually, we already partnered with uh, big projects such as Kava. Uh, we are working together with Avalanche. They uh, created their uh, EVM uh, instance uh, as another chain on their platform and they are working, well, I think it's on testnet, they have a bridge. So we will be, we want to be the first project to utilize their bridge on mainnet. So, you know, we are not waiting uh, to for the Polkadot ecosystem to, mm -hmm. to become mature. We are trying to bring to our users whatever is currently available mm -hmm. and want to be first at that. Uh, so, yeah, so when Polkadot goes live, we want to be, you know, the main the main gateway to onboard mm -hmm. the use the Ethereum users and other ecosystems users to 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 Polkadot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you launch having this onboarding, are you 
expecting a lot of organic growth from user adoption and people that are swapping and, and using DeFi? Or are you also providing incentives and other marketing efforts to help grow the platform? Yeah, we, we do both. We do both. First, like uh, since we 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 as a team have a lot of experience in the uh, traditional startup world as well as crypto world, and uh, as you heard about the analytics engine, we are really good at like pivoting and shifting and uh, figuring out what the user needs, not what we think the user needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we you know after after the launch, we are trying to establish this feed feedback loop before you know the team and the user base, and then. You know, basically just shift the value proposition based on what the user exactly needs. And obviously, you know, now since we have a token, we have uh, we have the ability to to do some uh, incentive layers so people can mm -hmm. uh, can start using it uh, and uh, they, 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 you know, be able to start using it faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about the Reef token. Can you talk about what is the main functionality within Reef Finance and, and how does it create a sustainable ecosystem? Uh, that's a that's a great question. So uh, the the first the first thing that we had in mind was sustainability. So the token uh, is built into all the you know on chain infrastructure and uh, it helps us create three different income streams. So uh, for example, the token will be used first for governance. Like there there are different parameters around the system. Second, it's built in into the basket engine. So all the profit distribution mechanism is tied to the token. And the third one is the protocol fees. So whenever you get into baskets. Uh, our analytics engine triggers like a rebalancing or reallocation. Certain protocol fees occur, which uh, can be paid with the token. They can also be paid with Ether, which we will on-chain convert like a, per a really small percentage. It's not fixed, just like uh, like, like the gas. So so uh, it will directly go into the Uniswap pool. So the token helps us create revenue streams uh, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, this comes from the basket engine as well as from uh, some uh, governance structure where people will be able to leverage the stake tokens into the pool in order to increase uh, increase their voting power. And uh, yeah, so the token is our like main thing that ties together the revenue streams and all the all the uh, in the whole infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. And as the platform is launching, you also have a token generation event for the Reef token. It's not out yet. Can you talk about what are the details surrounding that and what are the timelines for that? Yeah, sure. So uh, we plan to launch the, the TG in the next uh, two to two and a half weeks. Uh, we are currently finalizing uh, some uh, discussions with uh, certain tier one exchanges. Uh, it's, uh, it, it took uh, uh, some time. We are actually uh, fully prepared to do TG and we just finalized the first audit of the product. Uh, but we, we have to finalize those uh, discussions and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be on uh, the primary listing will be on a really big tier one exchange. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting, Denko. And as the con platform continues to grow, what do you think will be one of the major key success, success factors uh, for the long-term success of Reef Finance? Yeah, so our goal is to be Robin Hood for DeFi. So basically what Robin Hood did in the traditional financial landscape, how they have this perfect UI. I think it's all about the quality of the product, the value proposition and the mm -hmm. utility, the real utility that this product brings to the user. Mm -hmm. So we are expanding our basket types. Uh, you will be able to invest in like tokenized silver and gold. Mm -hmm. And we are coming like in Q2 with a completely new asset class, which is digital items, which through our, our wallet, you will be able to be exposed to completely different ecosystems, not related to crypto. So I think all of those things are very important to be built. And uh, it's, it's also very important to do this in an incremental way. So people start from something simple and then as the product evolves, they understand what the new feature means. So you don't wanna uh, you know, release 50 features and everything is over cluttered. So the, this, is, this is our goal. And we, we believe that being early uh, in this landscape, we can, uh, with the experience that we have and with our approach, we can definitely be the leader and take like a, like a big market share. Mm -hmm. Great answer. And I think that we definitely are very early on. And uh, we're running out of time, Denko, but for the viewers, what is the best way for them to follow along with the launch of Reef, the launch of the token, and to just get involved with the community? Sure. So the best way is to join our Telegram group. We also have we have the community group as well as the announcement group. Uh, we also like publish uh, uh, frequently, very frequently on Twitter as well as Medium. 
And uh, on Medium, we have a lot of material from, uh, you know, uh, founder story to origin story to uh, what all the partnerships that we do mean and, and do. So I think these three sources are the, the best way to follow the project. Sounds great. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. All the best on the launch with Reef, and let's follow up in the near future. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Ashton. Thanks for your time.